the FBI will crush you. This government will crush you and your family if you try to expose the truth about things that they are doing that are wrong. And we are all examples of that. That is FBI Special Agent and Whistleblower Garrett O'Boyle detailing the retaliation from the FBI and others that he and two of his colleagues have received ever since they exposed these alleged allegations of politicization and the weaponization of the DOJ. They came forward and he's now uh, facing increased backlash after testifying to Congress and calling on the House Subcommittee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government to fix the, quote, cancerous rot inside the FBI. And following his very passionate congressional testimony that you saw right here on Newsmax, a former colleague reached out in support to say other senior level agents do share O'Boyle's same concerns. All right, let's welcome in now FBI whistleblower Garrett O'Boyle, also with us, constitutional law attorney Jesse Banal. He is representing O'Boyle. Great to have you both here. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. You Garrett, your testimony talked about the hardships that your family faced. I, I think a lot of us really feel for you. And, uh, uh, you know, part of this, too, I, I'm astounded by the fact that you say you would do this all over again. If this is the you know, sacrifice that you have to make to expose what's going on at the FBI, you have no problem doing so. That's correct. I, I meant what I said at, my, at the hearing with my testimony, and I meant what I said when I made an oath to this nation and its constitution multiple times in the military as a police officer and then as a special agent. And I, I, again, I don't think it surprises a lot of people in our audience that you would receive backlash for doing this. Um, yeah. And, you know, those oaths, I, I think it was you as well who said you took an oath to the Constitution, not to the FBI. The question, though, is about the leadership of the FBI. We've heard members of Congress call for Christopher Wray to resign, call for Merrick Garland to resign. How many people in the leadership of the FBI actually do need to go before you feel like they can start to make a change? From my perspective, I think it's the lion's share of the upper echelons of management in the FBI who need to go. Uh, over the last few days since my testimony, I've heard from a number of other agents and FBI employees from all, all over the nation, different field offices, and they all are telling me, we we're with you, we support you, we stand behind you, we see the same things that you're seeing. And that's even up to the GS-14 and GS-15 level, which is uh, your first line supervisor and mid-level management. So it's really that senior executive staff level and up uh, through the assistant director ranks up to Director A himself. Uh, we need to clean house. I think it's the only way that the FBI hopefully someday can become a respected institution again, but it certainly isn't that right now. Well, that's your hope and so many others. We know you'll continue to follow through with everything that you've done. I mean, but, you know, uh, Attorney Banal, you're representing someone who many would see as a patriot. And yet we have people like Hillary Clinton just uh, walking around. Um, she sits down with the Financial Times at the weekend festival in D.C. And, you know, they don't ask about the dorm report. Um, she's making headlines for this comment about Biden's age. For anyone, his age is an issue and people have every right to consider it. Okay, FT is calling this a wide-ranging interview, folks. You can go to their website. It's transcribed. You can listen to it on the China Putin, the threat of U.S. democracy. Some would say the threat of U.S. democracy. Uh, why wouldn't they ask her about the Durham report? Instead, the first question from this reporter is about the Netflix series, the, the not binging the diplomat. I mean, the, we know the mainstream media isn't going to cover it. But as an attorney here, isn't there something that makes your blood boil, Jesse, when she sits down and has thrown all these softball questions? Oh, absolutely. The media, unfortunately, has absolutely no interest in getting to the uh, to the heart right now of uh, the misconduct that's been going on on the highest levels of our government, both at the FBI and the Department of Justice, um, stuff that, that Garrett has very bravely and, and courageously pointed out, and that the Durham report um, detailed, uh, very, very specifically detailed. But uh, the media, um, it, it wasn't that long ago that even in President Obama's time, the, the media, when they found out about misconduct um, uh, through the the revelations from Ed Snowden or others would come forward and would ask tough questions. But at this point, they are so concerned about 
stopping Donald Trump. They are so concerned about supporting um, the, the the FBI and, and the DOJ went, who went after Donald Trump that they will stop at uh, at nothing to cover up uh, people like Hillary Clinton who have very seriously abused our system. And they're never going to talk about people like Garrett who have courageously stood up uh, for, for accountability. Just about 30 seconds, Scarrett, I want to give you the final word when you see her and you see and you hear what your attorney just said, um, walking around just like there's going to be no consequences. How does that make you feel? Uh, it, it, it's sad. It's a sad point in our nation. And uh, it, it really goes back to some of my testimony and things I've been talking about. It's a two-tiered system. It's very clear to anyone who's paying attention. The government will come for anybody they want. But if you're in those upper echelons, like Hillary Clinton is, you can walk free and no one's going to bat an eye. All right, guys, thanks for being with us. Garrett and Jesse, we appreciate it. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. Thank you.